It's the Social Oddities Podcast, coming at you from five parts of the UK, all for one reason, the amazing world of wrestling. I've never seen a crowd so fired up, JR. They know what's coming next. They can't wait to get started, and neither can I. Hello everyone and welcome to the Social Oddities Podcast. Um, Damon's taking a week off, so I'm taking over her some duties for a week. Um, I'm joined by, <laughs> and there's where everyone's happy. So, um, I'm joined to this week by Adam and Kev. So, say hello, guys. Hello, hello. Um, the other two think family duty is more important than wrestling. This stupid bastards. Um, I think they're having sex somewhere. <laughs> you can't do that in the cinema now, can you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Damon's not editing this week, so that will get kept in. Hey. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, big news the, coming off this week. Uh, let's talk. We'll talk about backlash first, shall we? Um, big news: the Maharaja. What do we make of that? I think it's a great decision. Um, well, I think I was saying before he needed to win it. Um, I just hope that they don't just squash him now in a rematch and say, "Well, he's won it, and that's it." For yourself, Kev, what do you think? <sighs> I'm pleased that they've shifted the pack a bit, but honestly, I don't think he looks like a champion. But that's because I've seen him sort of through the decades. Well, I say decades, through like the <laughs> the, the build up to this point where he was in three man band and <laughs> sort of getting squashed every week. Yeah, no, just... I, totally see, I see what you mean by that one as well. But um, obviously, they're, they're doing it to appeal to the Indian market because they want to try and break through there. But I'm going to be fair to WWE and say at least they're trying to create a new star, which I've said before. Um, so let's see what see where it goes from here. Oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm liking the idea of the change. Don't get me wrong, but I honestly think there could have been other people to choose. But the Indian market, like you say, it works that way. So, yeah. yeah do, you, I mean, do you reckon if they weren't if they weren't aiming for the Indian market that he would have got it? No, I, I wouldn't say so. I think he's got it solely because that's the next market they're looking to try and break into. If you've got, you've got a show with AJ Styles, Nakamura, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Randy Orton. And you're giving the title to Jinder Mahal. That to me doesn't make sense. But I'm, I said at the start before when they started pushing them, I'm willing to give it a chance. So I'm looking forward to see where they go from here. Looking forward to the next month to see what happens at Money in the Bank and see if they do put it back on Randy Orton. Or if they go down the route of well, when we get into SmackDown, maybe they, a, a face wins the Money in the Bank briefcase and goes after Jinder that way. I think it's quite, they've got a lot of possibilities, which is a good thing that they have. Yeah, I was going to say there's a lot of avenues they can go down now. They have opened up a lot of things what could be interesting. Yeah, but I think I'd like to see Jinder hold it for a few months. And, like, say say the uh, Money in the Bank match, say Nakamura wins it, you mm. know you know he's instantly going to beat him. Have someone like... But if someone like Sami Zayn was to win it? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you, you could see that maybe Jinder would win. It'd be a 50-50 with Sami Zayn. Well, the way he's being booked, anyway, it'd definitely be 50-50. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously a big fan of Sami Zayn, so if he was to win the Money in the Bank briefcase and win the title, I'd be delighted. But, um, yeah, no, I can see positives in what they've done with the title. I can see good things in what they are going to, what they can do with the Money in the Bank. There's a lot of different ways it can, it can go, and it's going to keep the crowd guessing, which is all, which for me is a good thing. But what do we think of the match? I, uh, I don't think it was anything special. Uh, it, it wasn't a main event, that's for sure. You know, I didn't think it was actually that bad. I thought no, it was. It, was, it wasn't bad. I, I just don't think it was anything special. I think the pre-match brawl was pretty well done. Yeah. Um, just obviously shows that ruthless side to Randy Orton again and um, attacking him before the bell and all that kind of thing. And the the bump that um, one of the Singh brothers took through the table to oh, oh, over the table. <laughs> yeah, that was quite funny actually. <laughs> um, he just seen Randy Orton's face after he'd done that move, and he was like, "Ah," <laughs> kind of grimaced himself a little bit. But um, yeah, I thought for the time, well, they were given seventy minutes, but um, I thought it was it was decent for what they had. It wasn't bad. It was a cheap one for the heel as well, so that's a good way to get more heat on Mal. Oh yeah, yeah I, c- I can see a lot of positives in the match actually. Oh, yeah, there, there, there was, but I just didn't think the actual match itself, wrestling wise, was anything special. <clears throat> but neither neither of them are one for the purists, either, so... I wouldn't say it's, no, it's nothing for the purists. 
maybe get on to NXT for that one in a wee bit, but um, you guys probably know what match I'm talking about there. <laughs> um, but going back, the, the show was opened with the debut of the arts known as Shinsuke Nakamura. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I'll, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> um, what, what do you think of Nakamura's debut match on SmackDown Live or pay-per-view match? I thought it was a good match. I think Ziggler is someone that you can have a good match with, to, you know, to get try and get yourself over. I know I enjoyed it. Yeah, I was a big fan of Kev. It, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Um, personally, though, I think the ones at the house show was a lot better. You think? I honestly think, yeah. What I don't do know think? if that was because I was actually in person watching it. Yeah. And it was different to seeing it on the screen, but it just did strike me as a lot more chemistry in the WWE live event rather than. The Backlash event. Mm. So, sometimes you feel like the on TV they have to tone it down a bit. They do, I think, as well. Yeah. yeah. If it's a live show, they can kind of be a bit more, a bit more ruthless, a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I was expecting the opposite way. And some holding back, back a bit more fun on as the well. live show. Yeah. I don't think there's as many restrictions on a live show than there is on a TV show or a pay per view type event. So. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I, I liked it. I thought they built up to it quite well. They, uh, they built the match up quite well. I thought the, the super kick to the back of Nakamura's head looked sick. Um, Nakamura sold it like he was shot. So I thought that was a really good spot. And they had some really, really good near falls as well. So believable near falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but you actually did think that Ziggler might have had him. I mean, I think everybody knew that Nakamura, but then that's testament to the guys that make, makes you think that Ziggler might have actually beat him. Well, yeah. So I. Th- um, just delighted to see Nakamura actually wrestle on TV again for a, after a wee while. Um, were we surprised that Sami Zayn beat Baron Corbin? I, I was, yeah. I, thought, I was surprised, yeah. I think, yeah, because I think they were trying to. They all they, all, they start building something, and then they just end it straight away. You know, they, do they want Baron Corbin to be the next top guy or? See. In, in previous years, I've always can well, it's always been kind of a done thing where the winner of the Money in the Bank brief, bank briefcase goes on to a bit of a losing streak to throw right. people to throw people off the scent. So, oh, so you thinking? Do we maybe think that Baron Corbin's got then got to win the Money in the Bank briefcase? But mm. then you, but then you, you'd have but then to. obviously Jinder is the champion and all that's. But yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of different ways they can <clears throat> ways they can go, really, isn't there? Yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, I'm I'm I'm, of, I'm always happy to see Sammy win a match no matter when. It so he's a guy that's lost too many matches in the last six to seven months, I would say. So yeah, I'll give you that. He has lost uh, a lot. But yeah, I mean, I thought the guys worked well as well. So I thought it was again another decent match. So not the best match I've seen either of the guys have, but um, you know what you're going to get with a Sammy Zayn match where he's going to be the face that's kind of getting beat down, but he's never going to give up, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is the the modern day Daniel Bryan, I suppose. He, he is the, your underdog, isn't he? Really, that's he plays that role so well. So yeah, um, again, another decent match on Backlash. Um, the tag team championship match that was a bit of a joke match, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was entertaining, but it was a joke. It match. was entertaining, but yeah. <laughs> um. Just the, the many cautions of Tyler Breeze, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. But, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't known for its best wrestling, put it that way. <laughs> I mean, what what can you really say about that match? <laughs> to be fair, the, the opening the appearance, there you go. And bring back Perry Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somebody contact him just now and tell him he's been found alive. Never went in that chipper years ago. Um, yeah, but... Just with, with like, was it Jimmy or G? I can't remember which one it was, tripping over the mop and all that kind of stuff. It was, yeah, it was funny. It was entertaining, but I don't think it was ever in doubt that the Usos were going to come out winners. Yeah. But, I'll uh, be honest, I honestly thought Brizango might have won it. Do you think? Yeah, but I honestly wasn't expecting Jinder Mahal winning. So <laughs> I thought that would have been the title change, just to mix the tag team division up a bit. Mm. But then who would go up against Brizango? Apart from the Usos again, obviously. If you're looking for a heel team, do you turn maybe American Alpha heel just because I want to see American Alpha in title? <laughs> I don't know. Is the Ascension not on SmackDown? 
yeah, well, I suppose you could say they, they could be the Jinder Mahal of the tag team division to just get built up in six weeks, but... Yeah. Mm. See, honestly, that was my call for the title change of the night, but mm. I'm glad Jinder got it, in a way. That's fair enough. Um, the women's tag team match, the six women tag team match, they've had better, haven't they? Uh, yeah, but I seem to think the women's wrestling seems to be going downhill since Mania. Do you think it's maybe in, in a holding pattern? Um, yeah, I think it might be till the till they get something or get uh, some good ideas. Yeah. Say, oh, what, what do you think they're waiting for? I don't know. A good storyline. If That's you were book, if you were to book something, what would you do? Well, first of all, I mean, put, put you in the spot here. Yeah, you'd have you'd have to do the inevitable and get Bull Nakano back. <laughs> <laughs> and that only <laughs> took eleven minutes <laughs> because she will just get them all in shape. I mean, she, she's a champion. She's a born champion. <laughs> okay, now realistically, what would you do? That was realistic. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea what you're trying to say. Here. <laughs> okay, there's just there's no reasoning with this guy here. So um, yeah. I, I, I've got nothing. <laughs> so my um, my idea doesn't look so stupid now, does it? I've I've got nothing because you just threw me off guard with your stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to what I think the was the best match on Backlash. Kevin Owens, AJ Styles. I think it was a bit. I thought it was the best match on the show. Um, Counter win for the heel, so it keeps keeps the heat on Kevin Owens. But but I th- th- honestly thought the ending was stupid. So I'd hmm. rather have seen a DQ than yeah. a count out. It was a bit of a, a lame let down ending. But I, th- I suppose it's a way they try and not make either look weak or. Yeah, old. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I think a DQ would have been a lot better. They end up fighting outside of the ring and both getting counted out. Or yeah. Kevin Owens double- gets okay. DQ'd yeah. for being the heel of what he is and bringing a chair in and things, you know, there's there's ways around it than AJ Styles getting counted out because his foot's wrapped around wire. <laughs> but to be fair though, Kevin Owens pushed his foot in that hole, so I don't know. It was it was showing that Kevin Owens was being smart by doing what he was doing. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm probably putting a damper too much on the ending because I'm not a fan of single person count outs. Which is fair enough. Um, up until that point, what do you think of the match then? Since you're obviously not a fan of the end, then it's Kevin Owens and AJ. I mean, <laughs> it's always how many no. how many times have I said Kevin Owens? Well, AJ Styles can wrestle a paper bag and make the paper bag look good. Yeah, you know, I think there's only James Ellsworth he could make look good, and he's shite. So <laughs> <laughs> if he can do that. To be fair, even he's, the match they had um, last week or a couple of weeks ago with AJ and Jinder, even that match for an AJ Styles match wasn't good, which didn't leave me very confident on a whole on the whole Jinder thing either. But yeah, stick him in there with Kevin Owens. To be fair, stick him in there with Nakamura again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that later on. I mean, I tell you, if this match happens, I, I, obviously, what obviously, the hell are you going to do? What? AJ Nakamura, but if it doesn't yeah, happen, you, I'm just you're going to gonna have nothing to talk about after it happens. If it doesn't happen, I'm just going to go and watch the matches in Japan, so that's fine. I've still right, got that. There you go, then. But still, I want it in WWE on WrestleMania in front of the most eyes where everybody can see it. When you're there in person. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's my AJ Nakamura segment for this week. And I suppose there was well, one, one more match on the show, which was just kind of thrown in between, well, it seems like it was just kind of thrown in between to kind of give the crowd a break, really, was Luke Harper, Eric Rowan. Yeah, that was uh, just a nothing match, really, wasn't it? It seemed like a, like that was just kind of the toilet break match, really, wasn't it? Which is a shame for both guys, because... Both think, guys are good. Specifically, more more Harper for me, I think Harper's great. Mm-hmm. Um, Rowan works hard, but I don't think he's at the level of Luke Harper, but... Um, yeah, wasn't really a. I was just it was average, really, wasn't it? That match. I would have actually liked to have seen Luke Harper being put into the Money in the Bank match because I think he would have been a different dimension for that match as well. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, he'll take a bump <laughs> and probably a sick bump as well. <laughs> That's he's just yeah. he's, the guy's crazy. Um, yeah, but overall, 
big shock at the end, obviously, with Ginger winning. Um, let's let's see where it goes. Let's see where the title goes. So it was a decent show. It wasn't bad. Um, maybe just above average, but let's move on. What we'll go on, we'll go a day behind. Actually, when we'll go to NXT a takeover. I'm guessing we've all watched that. Yeah. Can I can I just stop? Of course, you can. Do you really want to start talking when he's going to come on in like ten minutes? Or are we going to try and do it before? No. So NXT Takeover Chicago. I'm guessing we've all watched that. Yes. yes. Yeah. And how fucking good was that show? It definitely put backlash to shame. It did. From from start for me from, from start to finish, I just thought that show was so good, so good. Um, strong young. It was a great match. Um, a lot of fire shown by Roddy as well, taking out Kelly and Dane and Alexander Wolf and, um, and I just think they had a really good match. It was. I really enjoyed that match. I'm, very, <laughs> to be very fair, though, I enjoyed the whole show, so I can't really say. Yeah. I'm going to say that for every match. Um, it was very fast paced as well, which is really good. I thought, um, and even even the bit like in the middle of the match where Kelly and Dane just hits Roddy with a big flying crossbody. Just looked like he killed him. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's not a move I would have liked to have taken from um, Big Demo anyway. But certainly not. <laughs> just get out of the fucking way of that. Um, I'm going to save the what I think was the best match of the whole weekend to last because I think we've probably got a, a bit more to say about that one. Um, so I'm going to skip past that and go into the women's match. Did we did we see Asuka retaining this one? Yeah, I think once Ember Moon was out, that pretty much confirmed Asuka was winning it for me. Yeah, definitely. Did she have to pin both Ruby and Nikki at the same time? No. <laughs> this, that's, this is, that's probably the only gripe that I've got with the show, to be completely honest. Yeah, because it makes it makes them look weak. And it, it makes, makes them, her dominance look too dominant. Yeah. It would have, it would have maybe looked better if the finish was the same as what it was, where maybe Nikki kicked out, but then Asuka hits Ruby with the knee, pins Ruby, and Nikki can't break up the pin. Or, yeah. something, or something like that. That way the two of them aren't getting pinned at the same time. It's keeping Nikki looking a bit stronger, maybe as a heel, because she can maybe then challenge Asuka. Obviously, I'm the Scottish guy, I'm going to say that, but um, I think the finish to that match was the only thing I really didn't like. But Yeah. What do you, what'd you think? Yeah, I think I think it just made it it made it look stupidly strong, and you got to think right. If that was a Reigns or a Cena, they would get booed to fuck. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> they, they would. Um, do we think the crowd's maybe turn on and ask a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think they are. Yeah, I, I think they're getting bored of because you can you can kind the of same kind of match a few boos in there now as well. So it's I mean maybe she is acting more heelish, and that's that's the start of maybe a heel turn. But do we, th- do we think she's well? She'd be teasing the heel turn for a little while. Yeah, I think even if even if they didn't, even if she didn't turn heel, the booze would still be coming anyway. Do we think they maybe wait until Ember comes back to pull the trigger in the heel turn? Yeah, and is it, then they can build that up maybe for NXT in Brooklyn or something, where maybe maybe that's where Ember actually wins the title. Uh, yeah, because where where is she from, Ember Moon? I don't really know. Oh, she's from Texas. Texas. But, oh, yeah. that's shit. Is that shit? So what well, away from home, but would, that would have been maybe a, a good, well, still New York maybe a good place to actually make the change, and then maybe Asuka comes up after it. But I've always obviously said always that she might come up undefeated and then have to relinquish the title. But if you watch the pre-show when Ember was saying that she's going to get her revenge on Asuka, so they're already can they're already still building towards that. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be yeah again interesting to see where they go from go with that as well. So um, the then moved on from there to the NXT title match, which Bobby Roode versus Hideo Itami. Um, quite slow to start with, I thought. Yeah, I just think Itami. I think is he playing it safe because of his injuries? Well, I think I think most Bobby Roode matches start quite slow and build up to a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm a big fan of Bobby Roode, but I, I enjoyed watching him in TNA. But it was a different character he had in TNA. T- yeah, TN what now? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the owl, the owl down the road. Oh, is, that they, is that what they say, the owl? Fuck that owl. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. I, I was a big fan of him down there, and I'm a fan of him in WWE. Sorry, NXT. But 
I don't know. I don't think he's got the same rink route when he's not with James Storm. Mm, bring in James Storm and reform beer money. Oh yeah, definitely love that. Yeah, that that, that, that was just. The, but that was what made Bobby Roode Bobby Roode in my eyes. But then he's he's came and he's got this whole. To be fair, does he even have a gimmick? Is it just he's got an, a word and it's just ridiculously over? That's not a knock on him. He's taken the word and he's just ran with like took the ball and ran with it. And it, the song's great. The entrance is great. What he like his mannerisms in that with the gimmick, if you want to call it that, is great as well. And he's is really good in the ring, and I really enjoy watch watching them work. But yeah, um, who who do we see coming up to challenge Bobby Roode next? Um, really, hmm? Alexander Black. Yeah, I think they are pushing pushing uh, Ali Black a little bit. <laughs> good old Tommy. Um, which I, I did want to say Tommy N, but. <laughs> Well, he's he's always, he's always Tommy N to me, damn it. Um, you, you've got to sort of do it properly, though, haven't you? Give me his true name. It's Tommy N. Oh, fucking Ali Black. Um, <laughs> do we do we think that Tommy N or Alistair Black, if you want to call him that, um, is ready for that spot? <clears throat> has, has he been built up enough to be the number one contender? No, but but I've got a feeling he might even bypass the NXT title altogether and go straight up to the main roster. What makes you think that? Uh, just something I may have read on the internet. Fair point. <laughs> that, that pretty much answers that question, then, doesn't it? Yeah, they're saying that that he's been because he's been touring a lot with them, hasn't he? Um, yeah, but he was touring with them on the European tour, and obviously he's well. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Tour, so it's they've done that before <laughs> as well with other people bringing them in from NXT or whatever, or even if they've been on different brands and put them on shows maybe in their own hometown even though it's not their brand so I wouldn't look too much into that maybe maybe but yeah I mean if he's ready for the main roster the guy's great but in his gimmicks I'm just phenomenal as well so because it, it does it does seem like that's him dialed up to 11 oh yeah yeah so it's it, it works really really well um I'm just going to I'm just going to say it it's Bobby Roode versus Drew here we go. <laughs> you knew it was coming, didn't you? So let's just put the belt on the Scottish guy. Put both belts on the Scottish people. And then I watch every week as much as I already watch every week anyway, but it's a different story. But yeah, I th- again, I thought the match was slow to start with. Um, I think you two agree with that. Yeah, it was a bit so, yeah. yeah. But I thought the story they built up was uh, done really well as well. Um, and I thought they made... Hideo looked strong with the fact that he had to hit him with a few DDTs to actually get the win. Yeah. So I thought, again, obviously Rude wins, but Hideo still looks strong in defeat, so that was, that was quite well done. And uh, do you see Hideo's hissy fit afterwards as well? Yeah, the hissy fit in the locker room. What, where's that going to lead to now? Oh, with um, Cassie Sono? Yeah. Mm, uh, yeah, again... Um, it's just add, add, add another little um, layer to him as well. So is, is Atami going to turn heel and go up against Ono? We're going to have be, like, the, ev- the evil Japanese guy in the NXT? Because WWE yeah. likes to make a form of evil. <laughs> yeah. Just wait for Nakamura's turn evil. <laughs> they can't do that. I'm, go- I'm going against the whole evil um, evil foreigner thing for that one. They can't turn a Nakamura heel. <laughs> um, and... That was the title match and the main event tag team match, ladder match. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. And uh, the ending just added to it, I thought. Did we see that coming? No. Um, yes, because I think we I, mentioned... I honestly we didn't. On, I think we mentioned on last week's show that, that someone was doing the music for... Yeah, that's right, wasn't it? Yeah, someone's yeah. making music for Johnny Gargano, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah, but not Champa, so... But not, yeah, but... I thought I still think the, the that match, just the other match, was great. Just from the whole thing was just phenomenal. Um, some of the sick, some of the bumps as well, like power bomb. But we've seen these type of things before as well. But power bombs through the ladders and um, all these type of. Oh yeah, I just loved it. I tell you what, I like that they've gone back to the wooden ladders. Oh yeah. On, on, honestly, yes, it's going to hurt more as such, but it's not going to cause as much damage as the metal ones. <clears throat> To be fair, when you're getting thrown through a ladder, it's a little bit easier to go through wood than it is to go through metal, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
I did notice that when they went through the ladder and those splinters they would fly in everywhere. I thought, oh, they've changed that up a little bit. But yeah, and again, the the post-match beatdown was just so good. But we've seen Champ as a heel in like the indie scene and that as well, and he, play, he does play the heel so well as well, so really looking forward to see what they do with that. Yeah, I'm not, waiting to see what comes from it. Yeah, I've not seen him as a heel, so I'm... Yeah, yeah um, he has... He's, been a heel all over like an indie scene and that even when he's coming across here as well he was he gets a big pop because of who he is but he, yeah. before he, but he does he does play the heel really well so i'm i'm looking forward to seeing i'm bringing that side of things and he's just got a vicious look to him as well doesn't he yeah yeah so um obviously with the, the nickname psycho killer you're gonna be a bit vicious <laughs> <laughs> see I, I like what they've done when they were sitting on the table they were like, he was looking at him like, why? Why have you done this? Mm-hmm. Like, trying to like hit his face, and it was like, move your fucking hand out the way now. You know, just the storytelling of it was just perfect. Yeah, that's what, you can you can see that with Gargano as well, and in his other matches as well, he just, the subtle things that he does just builds a story so well. Yeah. I think Gargano's great, I think Champa's great as well, I'm... Um, so if they if they build towards that and for New York or something, I think that match, yeah, that that could that could steal all different types of shows. To be completely honest, um, but again, going back now to the second match on the show before we um, wrap up NXT, a match that with two guys that we know pretty well uh, from the UK scene. So we've got, yeah. I've never heard of them. You, you never, never heard, heard of them? them? No. 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 UK Championship match, <laughs> Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne. What a fucking match. Yeah. Match yeah. of the weekend, without a doubt. Just, I, 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 there's so many good things to say about that match, I don't know where to start. So if any of you want to jump in, because I'm, I'm, there's that but many things. What, what can you say? It was just so, <laughs> so good. But, just, the, the chemistry they had was unreal. Yeah, but you, yeah, because I mean, you're a thinking... Oh. They, they, they work and train together pretty much every day for the last God knows how long. Yeah, but when you're in a WWE ring, it's got to be more calmed down than in a progress show, it, things like that. But they just seem to let it go and just do what they do best. Yeah, but, yeah. As, which is wrestle, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think there was there was a lot of different styles in the match as well. They kept it on the ground. They'd done some mat-based stuff. They were, they'd done some dives, much to Randy Orton's dismay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, the, again, the storytelling in the match I thought was great as well. Um, Dunn's facial expressions, I think, when Tyler was kicking out of things that he should, he had no right to kick out of, was brilliant. The crowd was just eating the match up as well. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that they had Jim Ross on commentary just made the match even better. Yeah, definitely. Just, Gr just brings you into a match and makes you feel like you're still sitting in the arena and just makes the match better, I think, as well. So. Just even when he was comparing Tyler Bate to some like similar to a Bob Backlund where he's got the smaller but really strong and that kind of thing as well just adds another layer to Tyler Bate. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, which uh, Michael Cole should have been just sitting at the side and taking notes. <laughs> so that was just a, it's one, don't it's, even get anyone started on him. It's it's one match and Gr was already better than Michael Cole's been in the last well ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's just uh, so good. Loved it. Loved it. Be- best match of the the weekend. Definitely Maybe. agree. Yeah, one hundred percent. If we're going, if we're going to say takeovers of pay per views, would we call this the best pay per view of the year so far? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I would say so. Although Mania, because it was there and the hardest yeah. came back. Y- yeah, but you, <laughs> you, 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 you can never count Mania in the best pay per view of the year. No. No. It's a spectacle. Yeah. If you want to call it anything, but yeah, this from from start to finish, I think that was good matches. Um, had a good pace to it. Well, I think probably the worst match of the night. I would probably say would be the women's match, but that's nothing against the women. I thought they tried to work hard. I just I think the ending hurt it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it just couldn't match up to what everybody else done storytelling wise. <clears throat> But now um, we are going to welcome on a little guest. Um, we're going to bring on Leo Rush. Leo, welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. 
I suppose the first thing I was going to say is um, I was watching the match that you had a couple of nights ago um, and Evolve for, with Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah. Um, how, how was that match for yourself? What, what did you think of that? I thought it was a really good match. Thank you. Yeah, that match was uh, was incredible. Um, that was my first time where I was actually with Junior, so um, it was uh, it was everything that I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, so obviously Zach Saber Junior, a guy that we know quite well over over here, working in the UK scene as well. So um, that was really good. Um, first thing I want to say really is well, again, thanks for coming on the show, um, and obviously the. A few weeks ago, you won the CZW World Heavyweight Championship as well. So how's how's that feeling? Being a world champion? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's a pretty good feeling being a a, a worldwide um, recognized world champion. So um, I feel like ever since I've uh, you know dedicated the majority of my time and schedule to CZW, that I'm a huge part of this new evolution that is happening within the company. So being the, the first world champion within this new era of CZW is, uh, is pretty cool. It was, uh, sorry, Adam, how you come? No, it's wicked. I mean, one of our friends sat in massive fan of yours. She lives in Miami. She was saying, what was it like to bring the belt home to your son? Oh, uh, he was, he, I know, I don't know if you saw the video or not, but he wasn't too excited in, in the video. But once I brought the, the title home, he was, he was pretty happy to take a picture with it. No, oh, wicked, wicked. <laughs> so that's what it's all about, isn't it? Um, just seeing the smile, the smile of the kids, and making them happy, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back, I mean, what 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 got you into wrestling? Oh, uh, what got me into wrestling was, uh, you know, I was I was just about four or five years old, and I remember watching TV, and my sisters turned to channels, and uh, it stopped on UPN's uh, SmackDown, and I remember seeing my first. Uh, the first match that I ever saw was Rikishi versus Booker T. And I remember uh, Rikishi giving Booker T a thing face and he threw, all, <laughs> threw up like all over the announce table and all over Michael Cole. So that's what really got me hooked uh, into, into wrestling. Um, but I didn't want to start being a uh, around me. Well, Sorry, you, I think you broke up a bit then. Yeah, sorry, Leo, you were breaking up a lot, but then we never caught the end of that. Sorry. Oh, I wanted to, uh, at the age of 10 or 12, that's when I uh, actually wanted to, you know, try to pursue a career in profession. Wow, so that, that, I mean, how old are you now? You're 22 now, so that's only been like the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, about 10 years. Wow. And um, that was that was training, that was the MCW training center, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I started training at the, the MCW training center that was formerly known as Bone Breakers. Uh, they had closed down um, a couple of years. Uh, prior to me actually signing up for the school, and then they reopened, and I was one of the first students that had signed up for this school. That's pretty cool, yeah. I was going to say as well, obviously, there was a, from, just from your time in ROH, which is a short time, but obviously, 2016 Top Prospect Tournament, that might that maybe have brought you to maybe a little bit of a wider audience as well. How was how was that um, for yourself when it winning that Prospect Tournament as well? Uh, I feel like the top prospect tournament opened up a lot of doors for me and uh, different opportunities. Um, I made uh, a lot of history with winning the top prospect tournament. I was the first one to win it um, that wasn't from the New England area. I was also the youngest person to ever win it. And I was the the first African-American to win the tournament. So I felt like me winning that tournament brought a lot of eyes on the Ring of Honor product and the tournament itself. And, uh, um, of course, the, the tournament was aired on national television all across the world. So a lot of different people um, had seen me win that tournament and different promoters and different fans. So I feel like it opened up a lot of doors and opportunities for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would, uh, I'd have to agree with that as well. Um, a little question we've, we've got here from someone as well saying, hypothetically, now, if the WWE were to come knocking and offer you the perfect contract, but you had to spend um, the first year as part of a faction, and it was one person from the main roster, one from NXT, and one wrestler from the independent scene. Which names would you choose to be in that faction with you? Oh, wow. That's a pretty interesting question. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not going to say Randy Orton. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> uh, I feel like the main roster, I would have to say... 
have to say AJ Styles. Um, NXT, I would say Patrick Clark. And you've got, you've got a lot of history with Patrick Clark, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be cool to uh, be in the thing with Patrick again. The Southern Impact, wasn't it? And, that right? Yep, yep. And the Independence, um, it would have to be between Shane Strickland and uh, and Joey Janela. Again, so, someone that you've had a lot of history with Joey Janela as well. I've, I've seen a few. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that would be an interesting mix, I would think, there, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so uh, a little bit of a, um, a, a group there, that would be pretty cool to see. I would like to see that. Yeah, that would be a pretty uh, interesting group of people on one team. So. Yeah. Book it, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll push Vince for a contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, he's, if he's listening. Um, Adam, you got something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the questions I got asked is, imagine WrestleMania 34, Leo Rush versus who? 34. What are, what are we on right now? 33? 32? Yeah, yeah. 33. 30, 33 just 30. happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 30. Uh, Next go, year, New Orleans, if you could book, book yourself in a match against anyone on WrestleMania, who would you go for? I would say, uh, I would have to go with Shinsuke. I think uh, I, I've met Shinsuke a few times when uh, when I first got into Ring of Honor and he was still there. I think the last time I seen him was when he had a match against, um, I want to say, Adam Cole in Philadelphia. I, I believe it was World of, War of the World Tour. Um, that was the last mm-hmm. time I saw Shinsuke. And uh, just seeing his recent work has been incredible. And um He's he's just so good at inside and outside the ring from his entrance to his to his entering stuff. So um, I definitely would like to, to mix it up. Yeah. What was it? I mean, you you obviously wrestled uh, Ricochet. What was that like? Oh, that was that was insane. I I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it when I was uh, even in the ring with him while I was wrestling. Uh, you know, as I would get kicked in the face or get clotheslined, <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe that I was in the ring. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And just to see the reaction of everybody was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That uh, match with Ricochet was at Pro Wrestling Gorilla, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, that was PWG. Or, or one, of, one of them, at least, yeah. Um, I've seen, seen Ricochet a few times, and the, the, the man can do things that I've never seen anyone else do before. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy what, the, what, what a lot of... Well, Ricochet and yourself and a lot of others that's crazy but just some of the things that you guys can do it's just yeah so um, I, was, I was going to ask you as well we, we um, a lot of us were in Orlando when we were at the WrestleCon Super Show okay so we seen the um, the 10 man tag that you were involved in as well which was oh uh, yeah <laughs> team, team Ricochet and um, Team Osprey what what was that match like to just to be part of that as well um, it was obviously the there was the dance off um, thing that ever that's been went viral and all that so um what was the match like to be involved in and that that type of crowd uh, as well yeah that that was the the perfect crowd the perfect weekend for a match like that um it was literally 10 of the best wrestlers in the world um a lot of us were friends <laughs> so just being in there with all of those guys and showing the world what we can do with each other and um it was it was a once in a lifetime moment. I truly believe that there will never be another match like that again <laughs> in, the, in the world of professional wrestling or indie wrestling. Um, you know, 10 man tag with some of the best wrestlers in the world. And, uh, you know, that was, that was incredible from, from ring of honor talent to, to new Japan, to, uh, you know, NXT with Drew Galloway was in that match. He's in NXT right now. Yeah. Um, so just the dynamic, different dynamic and uh, diversity in that match was, uh, was pretty cool. Just just, just seen earlier, Chris is madly in love with, uh, <laughs> with with Drew Galloway. So if you could keep the Drew Galloway talk to a low, because he gets, uh, got you. He, he gets excited a bit. I'm, I'm okay. going to be a big fan of the Scottish guys, obviously. So it's, yeah. <laughs> you, you, men- you, you mentioned uh, New Japan there. Would it be something... Like um, that, you'd be interested in going over to New Japan. 
Yeah, I would absolutely love to be a part of uh, of New Japan. Um, that's uh, a product that I've been watching since I was training. Um, and one of the, the huge goals that has been on my list, um, you know, I've set a lot of uh, huge goals for myself that I've accomplished so far. And New Japan is one of the few that is still on that that I haven't. So, um, you know, never say never. Everything is, uh, anything and everything is possible. I think I've shown that and um, throughout the last two years. So I definitely would like to try to get myself in New Japan sometime soon. So you say you, you'd like to get in New Japan. What's the, what's the, the end game for you? What, what, where do you want to, to finish? You know, where do you want to get to the highest level? Would it be WWE or? To be fair, there's, there's still a long way to go for, for Leo. So just still, still a young, a young man, really, isn't it? So. Well, my end goal is uh, to be a WWE Hall of Famer. Um, I feel like that should be everybody's end goal because yeah. that's why, uh, <clears throat> why everybody got into this was because of the WWE product on TV. Um, so, uh, I think that's definitely what I want my end goal to be. Um, but of course there's so much more to accomplish before I even get there. So, yeah. um, are we going to yeah, see you it one step at a time? Yeah. Are we going to see you in the UK anytime soon or? Oh yeah. I'll be in the UK, uh, within the next, uh, I want to say three weeks. Wow. Um, I'll be over there for, uh, for WXW. Um, in Germany, I'll be there for IPW UK, Rev Pro, Fight Nation. Yeah, de- definitely be good to see see you over in the UK at some point. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Last time I was over there, uh, made a lot of people happy. So um, <laughs> I'm definitely oh, looking forward to to being back. Oh, cool, cool. You you mentioned obviously. Well, Chris mentioned that you're obviously the MCW. Um, who is the who is the coming up now from Maryland that we should look out for? Um, there are about a handful of guys that I would look out for. Um, one by the name of uh, Ken Dixon. I don't know if you're familiar with Ken Dixon uh, from the Dixon line. Um, he is uh, he is a part of a tag team that recently uh, split up. So now he's doing a little bit of singles singles work right now um another guy by the name of dante caballero uh he is their uh mcw rage television champion right now um he's uh, a graduate of mcw and he's also uh he, he's, he's fairly new but he's he's been getting himself out there a lot and uh turning a lot of heads recently so um i would definitely say those two guys um, for right now, but it's uh, it should be should be interesting to see who else comes up from NCW because they they have a lot of students um that's about to graduate, so the landscape of NCW is definitely about to change pretty soon. Yeah. Who 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 had the biggest influence on you when you were when you were training as a as a kid? Who had the biggest you know influence to get you to where you are? Um. I feel like uh, a lot of influences um, were just the, the people who trained me, the guys that I hung around. Um, you know, growing up in the in the business, uh, my trainers, uh, R.J. Myers, uh, Keenan Creed, Tyler Hilton, um, Patrick Brink, uh, uh, and just the guys that I hung out with, um, surrounded myself with successful people early on in my career, like Shane Strickland, David Starr. Um, Sammy Callahan, uh, I've had some, some interactions with Adam Cole and Jay Lethal early on in my career. So those guys have been uh, huge inspirations to me and a big part of my development, um, in professional wrestling. Yeah. You mentioned Sammy Callahan there as well. We hear that he's taken over like a, well, we got more involved in the creative side than CCW as well. Um, so what's, uh, yeah. What's, What's, what's that like working with Sammy in that type of a role as well? Uh, a lot has definitely changed. Um, you know, Sammy has been where we all uh, want to go, and that's uh, WWE, NXT. And uh, he's seen how wrestling has changed um, from the very beginning uh, to what wrestling is now. He knows what works and what doesn't. He knows what uh, caters to the audience and what people, uh, you know, feed into. So I definitely think that, um, Sammy Cal-
Callahan is a great uh, addition to CZW Creative and, um, you know, this new crop of talent that's coming up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I always thought Sam Hall- Sammy Callahan got a bit of a raw deal in, in uh, NXT. I thought he had all the potential and, and they, they ruined it. They ruined him there, basically. Um, I think. And then since he's come out, again, he's got his stock back. His stock's risen again. And he's making some yep. of himself. I mean, that, that match we saw at Progress with, with Shane Strickland, um, Sammy Callahan versus the South Pacific Power Trip. That was, that was my match of the year so far. I don't know if you oh saw yeah, that. yeah, that was. I believe I saw that match too. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I think I saw that match, but I was a bit hungover from the night before. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, from what I remember of that match, it was that was a really good one as well. Um, again, like Adam says, one of the matches of the year for me, from what I remember. Um, <laughs> another question I was going, I was going to ask. Um, obviously, we we touched on Randy Orton er, earlier on, so if if we can ask, obviously, if you don't want to give an answer, but what did you make of, of Randy Orton's comments last week or a few weeks ago about the whole dive thing? Um, I didn't. I didn't mind it. A lot of people are super butthurt over it, <laughs> but yeah. um, you know, it it didn't bother me. Uh, you know, wrestling is is what wrestling is, and that, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all entertainment, man. You can't tell people what to do. Or you know what, what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, different people have different styles and different ways of entertaining people. So, you know, who cares what somebody else thinks? If it's working for you, then no, definitely uh, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I suppose it's all subjective to what what you like, I suppose, isn't it? So if you, if yeah, you like, yeah, exactly. If you like fast paced, high flying, all that kind of thing, or you you like mat based, more um, say methodical approach then it's it's depending what you like isn't it i think yeah. there's there's a place for for both or all different type of styles is like you said it's all entertainment yeah who i mean who who were your who were your, who were your idols when you were growing up you know who did you look uh, idol, um, idols growing up uh definitely had to be guys like eddie guerrero jeff hardy uh kurt angle chris benoit um yeah, all the guys that, that were kind of in that ruthless aggression area around 2000, 2002, 2004, um, yeah. those are definitely the guys that, that's been uh, kind of influences and inspirations to me that that's, uh, made me want to be as good as um, I've got in professional wrestling. Did you, did you get a chance to meet any of them? Um, only people that I've gotten a chance to meet within that list is Kurt Angle. Um, and Jeff Hardy, uh, I've met Kurt, um, two or three times. Um, and I've been on shows with Jeff Hardy about almost 10 times now. So that's pretty, pretty cool to be, uh, yeah. working alongside of somebody that I, that I grew up watching. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, like Chris said earlier, the three of us were all at Mania this year. And when the Hardy boys came out, I think I nearly, nearly cried. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Especially to hear them come out with that, that, uh, that old school, uh, Hardy boy song. They didn't come out to the new one yeah, yeah. Uh, back in 2008, 2009. But, yeah, to come out to that vintage, vintage uh, Hardy Boy song was, was pretty cool to see and hear. Definitely, yeah. It's, I think the, the crowd are really happy to see them back as well, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, that's... So, you said Jeff Hardy is one of the people, obviously, if you were to go into WWE and Jeff Hardy was still there, that's someone you'd be looking to work with. Oh yeah, most most definitely. Um, I think my my number one match that I would want uh, if I ever got there would be Jeff Hardy. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine some good things happening in that match. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wicked! I think I think Jeff Jeff seems to have turned his life around a bit better, and you know, he's, he's he's he is he is back to how he was ten years ago. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome to, to see and hear. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, where was it going? Um. Yeah, what 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 advice would you give to the kids trying to break into the business now? Um, some advice that that's helped me out uh, when I first got into the the business. Um, it was actually actually uh, the first piece of advice that I got was from Matt Hardy. Um, 
And I remember asking him, you know, what do, what did I need to do to succeed in professional wrestling and to be at a certain level that I wanted to to be at? And he told me that I needed to eat, sleep, and breathe wrestling. And if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be at the level that um, that I was wishing to to be at. And uh, you know, that's a that's a part of all of the elite talent that's in the business right now. Um, everybody that's at the top of the food chain. Um, you know, I, I, I never wanted to be a mediocre wrestler or uh, a wrestler that just got by. Um, I always wanted to be that number one guy, that top five that everybody was talking about. So, um, yeah, that's some advice that I would give to, to anybody that's starting to break into the wrestling businesses to eat, sleep and breathe wrestling. Um, it's ha- it has to be your life. You have to sacrifice any and everything for it if you want to. Uh, if you want the things that you desire in the business. Yeah, no, that, that's great advice. I mean, like you sh- that's how everybody should be. You know, really, if they're trying to be the best at what they want to be, they need to do it, eat, sleep, you know, and just live everything that they want to do if they want to, yeah. to conquer it. Yeah. I mean, you, you say you, you say you've got to like not cheat or anything. Or anything but what what is your favorite cheat meal? That was satin. What's that? You know, what what what's your what's your your, your guilty pleasure? Oh, uh, my favorite cheat meal. Um, at first it was pizza, but I started getting tired of pizza. But now I like to enjoy a good burger every once in a while. Good burger. Have you been to yeah, Five Guys? Yeah, do you like, yeah. do you like Five Guys. Oh yeah, yeah. I I love Five Guys. <laughs> <laughs> But it has to it has to be a bacon cheeseburger. It can't just be a regular cheeseburger. <laughs> bacon cheese. I don't think I've had that one, but I'll I'll sample it. Outside of the wrestling industry, what draws you for inspiration for character and promos and doing things in the ring? Um what that's inspires a very you? Good question. Uh things that inspire me outside the ring, I would definitely have to say uh action movies. Um, whether that's uh, regular action movies or superhero movies, and also music. Um, I know music is a weird one, but I um, I definitely, you know, each genre of music and just different sounds and melodies, I feel, brings a different mood. So I like to listen to different songs and see how just my mind reacts to uh, the different music that's out there. And I kind of just apply those different, you know, moods or demeanors or attitudes to whatever I'm doing inside the ring. So I would definitely say, uh, music and, uh, action movies. What, what is your favorite action movie ever? Uh, okay. Let me try to narrow it down. (laughs) I love, I love Marvel movies. Um, but I would definitely have to say the, I really liked Avengers two, and I really liked X Men Apocalypse. So those are those are the two that um, that I would have to say. And again, what's your guilty pleasure? What's your guilty pleasure with films? The film that you love but you shouldn't really love. <laughs> uh, you said guilty pleasure with with uh, with movies. Yeah, yeah, you know, like <laughs> like you know, if you like Pretty Woman or Dirty Dancing, what's your film that you you should you love? <laughs> you love but you shouldn't really love <laughs> um let's see uh um i mean outside of action movies i love watching comedy movies uh, i'm a big adam sandler fan so uh yeah i love action i love action movies and comedy movies and, and you mentioned you draw inspiration from music as well who's your favorite musician at the minute or um, I, I can't narrow it down to a favorite musician, but as far as the music itself, I would say my favorite genre of music. Um, huh, let's see. I don't know. It's a mix between, it's definitely a mix. Ah, I can't pick one, man. <laughs> I, I'm just such a, a great music lover. Uh, the only, I would say one that I can't stand though. Which is? I, I. I just can't get into country music. No. Yeah, I can't. I can't. This is something about country music that just doesn't connect with me. I don't know if it's all the same, all the same story, all the same, <laughs> uh, just the way it sounds. It's, it just all sounds the same to me. 
So that, that rules out Dolly Parton doing your entrance at WrestleMania 35 then? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Heard she, I heard she was keen. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll move back to wrestling. Um, <laughs> what, what's, what's your, what's your favourite match you've ever been in? Um, my favourite match that I've ever been in, um, I would say my series of matches with Joey Janela, CZW. Uh, just because of the emotion that it that it brought off to the fans, and uh, people were, were so connected to those matches, and just the storyline and how everything was drawn out was uh, was was pretty pretty cool to see. You don't see things like that on the indies um, that often. Drawn out storylines that you know takes you know a year or almost two years to to fully develop. So. I would say my, my my series of matches with Joey Janela and CZW, and that that feud was the one where um, obviously started started a heel turn for you in the process, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, and kind of a, that's where you got a little bit a darker gimmick and things like that as well. So yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Uh, a lot of experimenting throughout that feud with me and him, and a lot of things stuck. So uh, I would I would say that that feud. Um, is a huge part of you know my my hot streak in in the indie scene right now. And do you, do you prefer being or playing the part of a heel, or do you like being a, or playing the part of a babyface? Uh, you know, I'm a babyface at heart, um, but <laughs> uh, you know, pissing people off is, is pretty funny too. So uh, I like <laughs> I, I, I like both. I like both. I'm I'm a uh, a huge I'm pretty huge into conveying uh, a certain, um, you know, emotion and uh, getting people to react to certain things. So um, it, it's all pretty fun to me. <laughs> I suppose um, pissing people off comes a bit easier, I suppose, as well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can have a little bit more, a bit more free reign, some some more fun pissing people off. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think we'd be heels at heart, to be completely honest. Like, you mentioned um, the other day that you broke your nose. How, how did that go about? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I am absolutely miserable right now. My, I just feel so much pressure on my forehead and my uh, the middle of my face. It just sucks. Um, but, yeah, it's so weird uh, how it happened. I literally... Uh, I got hit with a move. Um, this was this past weekend at Evolve 84 versus Austin Theory. Um, he hit me with a blue thunder bomb, and I kicked out. Uh, I kicked out at two, and the referee's head was right where my face was as he was counting. So as I kicked out, my face just smashed right into his head. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so-, so pretty freaky act, pretty freak accident. That happened right there. Did he did he apologize afterwards or <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. But obviously he had the match at Evolve eighty five as well, so it's not kept you out of the ring or, or slowed you down any, has it? No. Uh yeah, I was talking to the to the other referee um, a lot of that, that Evolve eighty five match was actually the Jewish kind of yeah, if you've seen that match or not. But just the referee was checking on me a lot because I just there were times where it was hard for me to breathe um, in that match because of my nose. So, and, and there was nothing that I could do about it because uh, I haven't gone to the doc yet, and I didn't want to put any kind of tape or anything on my nose because I felt like it would make me, it would be harder for me to breathe if I did put tape on my nose. So I just left it how it was, and just kept icing it all night and all day. So. I mean, yeah, fair play because obviously it would have been pretty painful going through going through that match with a broken nose as well. So I can only say fair play to that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I sh- I struggle going to work with a headache, and you know, <laughs> you've got a broken nose. Yeah, it's just fair play to you there. <laughs> so, um, what obviously you said the next few weeks you've got a few shows coming up, and you'll be in the UK in the next few weeks. What's What's coming up in the, the next? Well, before you get to the UK and after. Uh, before I get to the UK this weekend, I will be well, tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, I'm making my AAW debut in Chicago, Illinois. 
um, me and Shane Strickland versus AR Fox and Ray Phoenix for the tag mm-hmm. titles. Um, Saturday or well, Friday, I am in Seattle, Washington, me versus Davey Richards uh, for Defy Wrestling. Um, Saturday, I'm in Queens, New York for House of Glory, uh, myself versus Ken Broadway. It's a title versus title match. Um, CZW world title versus, uh, the crown jewel champion. And, um, Sunday I'm making my Austin, Texas debut in inspire pro wrestling. So that should be pretty cool. It's myself versus Steve-O for the inspire pro, uh, world title. So I'm looking forward to this weekend. And then yes. next weekend I'm in California all weekend. So <laughs> that weather should be pretty awesome. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of mileage there. I mean, what do you do? What what you know? Like when you go into airports or sat in airports on the planes, what keeps you entertained? What do you do? Um, I just listen to music, man. Uh, when I'm on planes, I just listen to music. Uh, I I get super excited when I see a TV on the back of a chair, <laughs> and I can <laughs> I'm able to watch some movies while I'm on the flight. Um, but other than that, just music, movies. Um, on my layovers, I like calling my family. Uh, checking on them, seeing how they're doing. So, uh, yeah, this, the schedule is pretty rough, uh, especially when you have a, a four-show weekend like that, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Literally every day is maybe like a four, five-hour flight apart from each other. So yeah. the the travel schedule, it sucks pretty bad. But um, the adrenaline uh, definitely kicks in once I get in the ring. Yeah, so, def- definitely sounds like a heavy schedule. No. I struggle getting to work one day well, on a Monday, so yeah. <laughs> so I can only I can only imagine like what you guys go through for that. That's um, again fair play and hats off to you for that. It's just incredible. Thank you. Yes, rough man. But you know we all get through it. So as long as we're at the show, that's all that matters. <laughs> um, what's the next big CCW show that's coming up? Then who's that against, or who who's you defending the title? I know you've got your title versus title match coming up. Isn't it? You said it was in New York. Uh, yep, Queens, New York. So what's the uh, next big CCW event? Um, the next CCW show, uh, I believe, is July 7th or June 7th. Um, no, it's July 7th. I'm sorry. Uh, coming back uh, for CCW, it's called Evolution. Um, and it should, be, uh, it should be a pretty cool, pretty cool event. Like I said, it's the, the first show this first uh, new chapter in this new era of CZW. So um, that's the, the next big CZW show. But, you know, everywhere I go, uh, even when it's not CZW, I'll have that yeah. CZW title on the line. So, uh, you know, I, like I said, I, I'll defend it anywhere, anytime, anybody, because I want to make that title a world title again. I just don't want to, you know, end CZW, you know. So I'm open to, to any open challenges all across the world for that title. So shoot. Have you ever have you ever faced uh, Matt Riddle? Or? Uh, I faced Matt Riddle one time, and uh, that's when we first um, our names were first starting to really really break out. Um, I believe it was Evolve Fifty One or Evolve Fifty Two. Um, it was in uh, it was in Queens, New York. Uh, this was before Matt Riddle had the the really long hair, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, we've only wrestled about one time, but at that time I was a bit injured, so I'm pretty sure if we got to the it'll be a different story. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, because I mean, he, he's over here wrestling quite a lot recently, so he, he's quite well known now over in England. Um, yeah, but he, Matt Riddle has blew up in the last well, couple of years as well, hasn't he? So he's, yeah, he's getting really, really popular wherever he goes now, really. So, be interesting to see what's, what's in his future as well. Um, Talking about obviously, the, well, obviously we're talking about the UK scene. If if you could pick anyone from the UK scene that you would need, that you'd like to have a match with, who would that be and why? Uh obviously I know you've just wrestled um, Zach Saber and a couple of days ago, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's one guy. Um, I've been saying it a lot actually, um, but Jimmy Havoc is definitely one on my list. Oh yeah, um, it's, just because uh, he he sparks the attention of a lot of people. Um, uh, even with him walking in the room, you know, all eyes are on him. 
uh, all of his promos and vignettes are very captivating. And uh, I feel like a good story could be told with both of us. So um, I would love to be in the ring with, with Jimmy Havoc. Is Jimmy doing some CZW stuff as well? or? Uh, yes, he, he is. He's actually uh, he's actually going to be in tourn- Tournament of Death this year. So yeah. uh, that should be pretty interesting. Uh, how he plays out in that. And with Jimmy Haber there, probably, he probably will kill somebody, so yeah. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be, yeah, that'll be interesting to watch um, Jimmy Havoc in that in that um, tournament as well, so that'd be really good. Um, yeah, I, I think Jimmy, I think ever since he's come back from his uh, knee injuries, he seems to go from strength to strength. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see Jimmy. I remember meeting him... Uh, in the summer of last year, and I believe he was hurt. Um, he wasn't wrestling at the time when I did see him. Um, but it's cool to see him back in the ring and doing what he's doing. And, uh, you know, he looks he looks better than ever. So, so. Well, I think we're nearly nearly out of time with you, with uh, our guest Leo Rush today. So we'd like to say thank you, Leo, for coming on. No, thank you guys for reaching out. This, is, uh, this has been pretty awesome. I don't do a lot of these, so... Uh, it's pretty cool to, uh, you know, to to share my stories with with everybody and uh, just different tips to, you know, and different ways that I've followed by to be successful in professional wrestling. So thank you guys for reaching out. That's right. Thanks for thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time, Leo. Thank you. This is Leo Rush, and you're listening to the Social Audience Podcast. Don't forget to tune in next time for more fighting talk. Please don't take that out of context. I was talking about wrestling. Catch you next time.